Hello and welcome to another Nicomedia tutorial. So now I think I have enough requests for this uh, loop here and for this animation I did a uh, uh, few days ago. It's this year. And yes, uh, yeah, there were a, l a lot of questions about it. And yeah, for, let's do this today. And I'm not sure if I can recreate it. Um, it, it will be maybe a little longer tutorial because uh, uh, I, I made this just I did not care about what I do. This was just uh, playing around and doing something. And I'm not sure if I, I remember every step I did. <laughs> uh, yeah, but uh, I'm sure we can, we can recreate it, of course. And yeah, what we need for the wall here behind, I used a volume builder, so I can make this, this nice holes here. And uh, so you, you, if you want to use the volume builder, you need R20 or R21 version of Cinema 4D. And uh, but I think this is possible with uh, a normal pool as well, uh, a pool, and then put it in a smoothing deformer or something else. This should work as well. So. so shouldn't be any problem and uh, for this uh, this is not a texture here these are extruded polygons and uh, for this i used the great free plug-in the divider from alexei Karpik. and here you see a small video what you can do is this it's, it's really, really fun so i played a lot with it uh, but uh, I just played around and uh, watched what came out coincidentally and uh, let's play with it. And today we will try this and you can download this, you see some nice, really nice things. You can download these plugins on his Gumroad here and you see it's free but uh, it would be really nice if you uh, donate a little, why not? Uh, I think that the, the programmer, the, the, the developer, deserves it. So, so, and it's Christmas, so, so think about it. <laughs> yeah, anyway, so have fun. Let's let's have fun and uh, let's tinker around it. I can, it could be that I make some mistakes. But as I said, I, I made this, this loop. Uh, I did not plan it. I just played around and this came out. And yeah, good. So, low, so, 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 so. Yeah, let's start. We need, of course, our divider. This plugin, is, you install the plugin as all the other plugins, just drag it in your plugin folder and it's there. And this plugin needs an object. You can input every object, but the only uh, restriction is that the object uh, uh, does not have more than 50 polygons, so uh, maximum is 50 polygons, uh, but that, that is more than enough, so uh, yeah. But I used for this uh, a simple polygon, I used a polygon, I tried it with, with a cylinder and everything, but that I did not get nice results because it's a ceiling that you get very fast too many polygons and, and it does not really work nice with the subdivision surface then and, and something else so i found another way and this is my way i did it so drag the polygon under the divider and you will get something like this so now you have a lot to play here you can play here you can play here you can play there you can play with there here we can play everything is to play here and you have two different algorithms here. See, and here you have the iterations. You can see I want more iterations. Now let's bring this a little to the side here. Put this to here. Nice. So, it, of course, you have a random seed. You can change this however you want. And you have a noise. The noise is important for us. Um, if you take the noise to one, the full noise, so the slider don't have any effect anymore. So, because we are, have a full noise, and so, and but with the full noise, you can uh, make a nice loop. So when you this loop progresses, you see it loops. So when we animate this loop here, so frame zero here, a keyframe, 
frame 100 and another keyframe and when we run this oops frame 0 keyframe frame 100 uh, to go to 100 of course keyframe and now see that loops very very nice and it's no hiccups no nothing it looks perfect and uh, noise frequency is simply the speed of the movement here okay good let's find yeah and you can now i, sh I show you how you can uh, extrude you can extrude here with a simple uh, mo extrude here but with the mo extrude uh, you get a uh, hollow uh, objects on the on the other side and no caps and nothing uh, and I want to show you one thing what maybe not uh, not uninteresting uh, so uh, if you want to extrude some just some polygons not all of them yeah this is you cannot do with the more extrude as well so so uh, you want to you see you cannot select any polygon on the divider here that's not possible but if you want to use it you simply uh, go to the divider and bring the divider in a null object and under the null object i want the deformer i want the correction deformer so under the null object the correction deformer works on the divider so go to the correction deformer and you see immediately now we can uh, use our polygon selection. So let's say I select this, I select this, select this, select this, select this, this, whatever you want. So, and now I make a polygon selection, so set selection. I have it in my toolbar. If you don't have any toolbar, go to select every time the same and set selection. Uh, okay, and now I want to extrude. I want to extrude with this. Uh, extrude generator and modifier. The generator is you can use if you want to extrude everything. Uh, if you want to extrude uh, just selected polygons, you need the modifier because in the modifier you have the possibility to drag in a selection tag. So, uh, yeah, so I need this modifier here and drag it under the correction deformer. See, now it it, it uh, extrudes everything, but here I have restrict the polygon selection when I drag it with him. I have just these polygons. And the fun thing of this is, it's still animated. So you have, you can have a lot of fun with this. I think you see that. Uh, hopefully you, you show me your works here, what you do, your, your ideas here. And, and I really like to see what you do it with, what you do with it. So, okay, this is it so far. Now let's do what uh, the thing I did. So, let's delete these two guys here. Okay, now I try to find a nice pattern I like. This looks not bad at all, but maybe I want a little more, don't know what, but a little more what so hmm. I just try to have not too small polygons this this looks not bad here uh, and not too big this is a little too big here let's see if we can Don't think I know what I do here, so this is just coincidentally. <laughs> this is, <laughs> this is, I really do not know what I do, but I do it. So, something like that. Yeah, okay, let's say this is nice. Of course, I could take more polygons here, but uh, for, for a final render, maybe yes, but we can change this later on, so this is, is no problem. But for now and for the speed, so it does not have to calculate as much. Maybe the tailor is, no, this is too boring, so this is better. Okay, I save this. Uh, let's save it under, under, 
Yeah, divider, why not? Save it and divider. Okay. Good. Now, as I said, I tried it with a, uh, with a, a cylinder and everything, and it was not good. So now I want to wrap this this polygon here. So how do I do this? I do this like this. First, I want that the that this this uh, the wrap deformer uh, ah, here. We have a wrap deformer here, and I want that it's same size as my polygon. So I go to my polygon and shift click on this guy this is just that I have the same size and position of this and but I want to wrap the divider here so I bring this out bring the divider in a null object alt g and I need it just once and the wrap deform under the null so it's it uh, works on the divider okay R for rotation, you see this is not the correct. Uh -huh. so this is what I want. 90. Okay. And I want, of course, a full 360 thing. Okay. And then I want a radius of 10 around 10. Seems to be nice. Okay. Good, but we see we have no the, the rounding does not look nice. Of course, we have two less subdivisions, so we can work with uh, a subdivision surface, of course. So when I bring this in a subdivision surface, the whole null, we get something like this. <laughs> this is not what we want, of course. But. What we need is just a bevel on each of this. And at first we want we want to extrude everything. This is the first thing. So But yeah, but we get this we can uh use this a little different. Let's see. We can bring the divider in the rep let me think about. Yeah, let's bring the divider in the subdivision and wrap the divider, then we should get that looks better. For the moment, uh, I want to see uh, not the roundings, I want the, uh, the subdivisions, but not the roundings. And for this, we have here a type named open subdiv bilinear. With this, we can use this here. And I see, okay, that looks exactly like how you like it. Maybe here, well, so we get a nice uh, thing. If if yeah, as higher you go here, maybe at the final render, then you get to go to four or even five. That's on here. And with ni, I have the other pump, so I can nicely see what I have. And that looks nice. And now I want to extrude here the polygons. So I go to my divider and bring in I wanted to extrude every polygon so uh, I can use the generator not the modifier go to the divider and with alt click on the thing so it becomes a child of the you know, just see it does something so now I can think if I want it in the other direction or minus five maybe no five was not so bad, I think. That looks not not too shabby. Maybe four. Yeah. Okay. But now I want pebbles here to so that we have that we see our polygons nicely. And when I go to my surfaces now and go to my cat multi arc back, I get this here. Looks funny too when we play it. <laughs> but it's not what we want. I have to bury my polygon extruder here. So I bring my polygon extruder in a null with alt G. And under the null, I want to bevel it with uh, effects on the extruder. So I take a bevel deformer. And I know I want the bevel deformer not chamfer, I want the solid. And maybe 0.5 for the moment. That should work here. 
and I bring it under the null. And now, let's see what we get. So we have a really nice, technically looking thing here. And this is exactly what we want. Save it and be happy with it. <laughs> Yay! Good. Next thing. And this should, of course, still work crazy fine. Okay. Now comes the next part. We wrap this around uh, a spline. And I did this with a, a trefoid spline, so with the formula spline. And I want to show you a site which is, which is really great. I put it in my uh, description of this video. And this is uh, 3D Meyer. This is this guy here. He has a lot of formulas. You see here, this is the trefoid formula here. And so when we go to plugins, you have here the nodes. It's all German, but I think you will have, uh, if you're not a German or an Austrian or someone who speaks German, uh, right click and translate to English or whatever your language is should work here as well. And so I go to the nodes here. And you see, I have a lot of things to play. We can take this node here. This is this formula. A tree for a knot, this one, or we take the, the one I took. This is the easy one here. Uh, the granny note. <laughs> you can take every note of this. And I want to show you how to use these formulas in the formula node. And the formula spline. So we use this one for the moment. It's the easiest one. And so let's play with this. Uh, so let's go to there. And I make a new file, a new project, just for the uh, spline that we see how it works nicely. We need a formula spline. Okay, so far so good. Uh, I don't want to go in the other direction, so you see I'm, I'm here on minus one, I want to do zero. And if you go with the T marks up, you will get more and more and more and more, you see. So you get, and, but it's you need more uh, subdivisions, so go up with the samples, you get something like this, and nice, so, so it works. So let's go here back to one, to the original things, and bring in our formula. You see we have here x, t, uh, x, t, y, and c, t. And we have here x, t, y, t, and c, t. Good. This is all we need to know. Now as I copy all after the equal sign here, so don't forget the minus at the beginning. Copy, go back, paste it in the X, enter. Back, minus 15, blah, 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 blah. This is for me totally un understandable. <laughs> how oh, this works with the, I'm not a formula guy and I'm so happy with this size so zack now it we thought it should look like this but we have seen uh, we get just a part of this spline with the tmax we have to go with the tmax up so let's go check 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 yeah let's see it's a little too far and what we need is more samples that we get a nice round thing here. Okay, I go to uniform here. This looks nice so far. And I want to close, so, so not, not totally close. I could stay with this, but uh, because when when I uh, convert the spline, I can go to close spline, but I want to be the, as, as uh, close as possible here. So I go with the Tmax up, I hold my Alt key, so I make small, and this is a little too much here, let's say 28, and yeah, this is nice here, this is okay, because now when I say to this formula spline, you have this guy here now, I say current state to object, I have it here in my toolbar, if you don't have the toolbar, current state to object. So current state to object, and in this formula you still have the close spline. Now, when I go to here, check, close spline, and we have one nice spline. 
I don't want it linear, I want a, let's say, B spline or a, or a Bessier spline. Bessier is maybe. And we have this cool spline now. And let's make another one. So let's write this, go to the formula spline here, copy this one, and make another one. So let's see. If maybe the grainy not <laughs> looks funny. Let's make it more complicated. Let's see. Yeah, that looks complicated. Let's make this one. Simply xt all after the equal sign, copy in the x, paste, enter. Copy, paste, enter, and copy, paste, enter. So this is a quite big spline, but you see, we have this funny spline. <laughs> so easy it is. And you see, this, this works perfect with the 628 here. Yeah. We can close it when we converted it, so, and it's okay, this is a little jaggy here. Let's go to the uniform and go up a little bit, so. And if you're not happy with this, but it does not matter, because when you stay like this and convert it, and here I can go now and then to B spline again to see uniform. And here I can go check, check until I like it. Close spline, and we have this great spline here. You never would be uh, able to make this with just dragging points around. <laughs> okay, I hope this is clear so far. And yeah, go through to, to, to this. Is, you see that you have such a And it's not just these knot things here. The, the, uh, the Toros knots, by the way. So, so this, this sanction of this, you don't have the splines here, the formulas. Go to the Toros knots here. And then you have everything explained and you get all, all what you need. And you can uh, still have tutorials here as well. You have what have. Yeah, everything. Uh, just go through. This is a very, very, very interesting site here. This is a great, great resource for for, for playing around. And be sure you will you will uh, stay days on this site. <laughs> okay, so let's go back here. We have our formula here. So this is our thing we want. This is the converted one, you see, closed spline, and this is exactly what I want. I copy this one, go back to our, uh, come on, go back to our divider, paste it, and I have it here now. So, make this a little bigger, the spline, T plus K. Woo, 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 woo. Maybe even bigger, okay. And now we want to direct this. Spline looks a little, so that you see from the front, this is exactly the spline we want. Okay, so now we, how do we wrap this around? We bring the whole null here in a connect object. Select my null, alt click on connect, so the connect will be a parent of everything under it. The connect now uh, needs a spline wrap under it. So I connect, select it, and we shift click. The shift makes a child, the alt makes a parent. So uh, I go to my spline right, shift click, spline wrap. So and now I simply drag in the spline wrap, my spline, my formula spline. Okay, this looks not nice. We need here, a f yeah, I have to try, but this, this should be plus C. Yep. And we have here fit the spline. This is, I don't want this, I want to keep linked. And I have this nice thing now going. And when I offset here, 
so I animate the offset, let's say, so go frame zero, frame 100, 200, enter, and this is maybe a little slow, but see, it drags around. But you will see, we get a problem. Let's deactivate for the moment this. Let's go slowly through and you see here we have a problem and if we go through here, oh, come here, you see this problem here and that destroys us this whole thing here. So we have to repair this and this is quite easy. Let's go to zero track. What we need is a rail spline here. The, the spline shows in which direction it should uh, face. So we, a rail spline, as you see in the spline wrapper, you have to here rail. And for the rail spline, we simply copy our formula spline here. I name it rail, you can name it however you want, this does not matter and drag it in the spline wrap here. Then we get cows. So this is not what we want. What we need now is to make the formula spline, the, the rail spline, a little bigger than the original one. So I hit T on the keyboard. So you see what you have here. And I just make it a little bigger. Okay, that's enough. But it looks a little weird, you see here, that we have a strange rounding here. And we can correct this, the spline wrap. Under the rotation here, we have rotation from rail, we don't want this. So, that's it. Now we don't have any distortions. Now we can work. Everything now looks nice. Why is this here? Let's see. Don't like this. This shouldn't have to do with the spline. Ah, the connect here. Don't use the weld. It welds us the, the bevel together. So that's it. Was it? That's what we want. Okay. Save it. Because we, when, the, when we bevel it, we get very close points together and, and the connect is set to a tolerance of 0.1 centimeter. And if something in the bevel is in this tolerance, it, it uh, melts it together. So we get, and then we get these ugly uh, things, what you, saw, what you have seen. Okay, we have this now. The next step, so we can hide the rail here. We could hide the other one too, but this doesn't matter. Uh, the next thing is how get we get different colors now on this whole thing. Okay, and this is every time yeah, it works with the mode of shader, with the color shader. And I have sh I've showed it in many tutorials now how it works in physical render and in Octane. And this time I just show it in Octane, or, uh, or it, we will see, I don't know. Uh, the, the final render I do in Octane, <laughs> because we, with, with the volumes and that I do uh, this kind of subsurface scattering, and so this would need uh, forever when I render it with, with the physical render. Uh, so you have to do it. With the, if you have only the physical render, just try to find another way to do it with the glass. Or, or, or do it, uh, I don't, just find another another way, you will find another way. So, so, or you have a strong machine and it doesn't matter, or you, you render overnight, so it doesn't matter. Good. So, uh, yeah, different colors. What we need with for different colors is, is, we need, of course, a random effector for random colors. So. I don't know where we put it in, but random parameter we need only effect color. So good, nice, we have this. Don't want to see this blind wrapper here, and I don't want to see this wrapper here. 
Uh, the next step. We need to fracture this thing here. But where? The fracture should work when I put the fracture over the subdivision surface. Then it fractures here and I should get the colors and everywhere. When I fracture here in the divider, uh, the subdivision surface would, uh, would kill our random color. So I have to bring it over the subdivision surface. It's a parent for the subdivision surface, I think. So I select my subdivision surface, MoGraph, and yeah, MoGraph and Fracture. So Alt click on Fracture, Alt makes it parent. Okay. And this I have to set to explode segments. And here I need a random effector with a random color. So I thought we will see here something, but we don't. Uh, up, 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 up. But it should work. Let's see. Let's make. I make now uh, for the physical render a quick material to see how if it works. So we need just in the color channel. We need just a MoGraph color shader, and this I put on the fracture. Okay, it does something, it, it, re, it realized it, but let's see, is it disconnect here? Aha, uh -huh, the connect kills it. Yeah, but the good thing is, for the formula, for the spline wrapper, the connect object does not have to be uh, active. The formula, uh, the this, this spline ramp works anyway. Even if the connect, it has to be there, but it has not to be activated. So I can deactivate it and it works. You see? And yeah, this is it. We know it works. Okay, we can delete this. And now I do it with uh, Octane thing. So Octane, dialog, make a new material. And I want to blend between a white material and a gold material. So, uh, and I want a real gold. I want a gold metallic material and a white glossy material. Otherwise, I could do it just with, with a uh, colorizer from yellow to white or something else. But I want really a uh, metallic to glossy material. So, for this, I make a new material in the node editor. Uh, and oops, so let's bring in here the guy with this here. And let's bring in the the, the octane rig. I know I will need it. So I don't need the color here, or the, the, the floor here. So nice. The background is okay because we make our own wall later, so it just doesn't matter. And I need now a composite material. Bring it in. So the first material, that material should be a white glossy material. Glossy, GGX. Let's bring in the color, RGB spectrum, nicely whitely. Little roughness as well oops okay and put it on our fracture object okay we have a nice thing here. the second material should be something like gold i don't make an, an, a real gold uh, i make it just i eyeball it and play around a little bit so a second material that material and this should be now a metallic material. And I want this a Beckman. And this should be a gold material. So uh, I want to see just this material. And let's, let's make a gold material. How do we make a gold material now? I go to the index. And this thing I want IR in color. 
normally uh, for the real thing you, you would use uh, this one. I have it in my uh, material pack for Octane, there is a real gold, I have the exactly uh, values here. But we we'll play with this iron color. Let's see what we get. Do we get? Ah, uh, no, it does not. Well, let's put it as uh, first material. Okay. So I see the material here. It looks not bad. It looks like material. And I will take a RGB spectrum. The diffuse. Do something like thought this would work. Okay, let's go. Good. Why not? Oh, we get a quite nice gold here. Look. Not a real code, but it's a nice code. Okay, and a little. So, this. And I want here even more IOR. Bring this up here. I want it. Okay. Now I bring back this guy here. I want here more IOR two in this. Why is here an artistic distribution? Yes, cost okay. Little okay. it looks like satin, satin as a satin. Yeah. Okay. That looks later different when we use another HDI, uh, HDI of course. Good, and now we want to blend these two together. And this I do with the color shader. MoGraph color shader. And bring it in. And you see, we have a metal material and a glossy material. And I am so happy. Let's go to the, oopsie. Let's go to the random effector and let's try use alpha strength. Well, I think the other one is better one. So. And we can uh, work with this a little bit so we can uh, change this a little bit. Uh, when we put between a colorizer, which does not work now because when I put it in between, so we have to go. Delete this, go to the colorizer, make the texture here, take here the mo the color shader, and look now it works. Okay. And here I can tell so what I want to see. I want to see just like this. You can simply try what you want to see more, what you want to see less. like this maybe nope yeah that looks a bit as I said with that we have we fine-tune this later with the with an, a nice HDRI okay we have this now next step is Close this. We need a sweep here, so chum 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 chum. Uh, we can use a simple sweep, yes. This is our formula spline. Let's make a circle spline. It's about 8 centimeter radius. I think this was what we had here. 
bring it here. Sweep nerp. Uh, it's not it's, it's the old names, the nerps. Sir and formula. Wink. Okay. Nice. Now this should work here. Dum -dum 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 -dum. Okay, but what I don't like is this here. Caps, no caps. And connect it. Then we should get rid of this normally. Not really. And why? This is closed. You know what? I'll make it different. So if you don't don't like it like this, so let's make a cylinder. We know now the radius was about 5.5 .5 or so, or 6.5, I don't know. And no caps. And lots of segments here. Bring back the things in H. So we can see how many segments we have here. NH is, uh, NI is uh, just isobarms to see, so that's then uh, NB is bring back the lines and NH is uh, go back from isobounds to the wireframe. So, uh, yep. And we steal this spline wrap here and drag it here. Control, drag it out and bring it under the cylinder. Loop. And here in this spline wrapper we say fit spline. So, okay. And now the cylinder gets more height segments, that will get nice. Yes, so... And now... That looks better. Still a little hiccup here. But I think with this we can live. We can try here in this spline here, playing with the rotation a little bit. Not with the size, with the rotation. But that will not help a lot, I think. Not that this rotation I want. Uh, let's open this. be totally <laughs> clear. Okay. Safe. And yeah. That's it so far. Now we make this wall thing safely. Oh, it goes faster than I thought it will. Uh, yeah, the wall thing. Uh, it's a simple cube. Let's make the cube. I don't know. The CX is 100. Maybe I have to bring it. What do I have to do? I feel so. 50 here. Boing. Should work. Let's make a nice camera here. Object. Camera. Activated coordinates zero 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 and then protection deck and I leave the C and the Y open. If so that the cube is a little small, so let's go to the object. It is 300 by 300, so nice. Save it. Now bring the cube in a volume builder. Da, 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 da. 
fügt dazu, äh, die Volumes hier. So, Volume Builder, Alt-Click, Cube selected, Alt-Click makes the Volume Builder parent, and Alt-Click the Volume Measure makes parent the Volume Builder, Alt, Alt-Click Volume Measure, this is what I need. The Volume Builder here is the bigger one. One for the moment, should be fine. And I don't want to see any lines, so NA. Okay, this we have. Now I want to subtract this spline here, this cylinder, so to say. Uh, this should be possible when I drag in the cylinder here and tell this. Why do I see anything here? Ah, it can. No. This should already do something. Volume Peter. Uniform. We should see the cylinder. Oh, the, no, this cylinder is an open mesh for this, I think. No, it should work anyways. Ah, I know what, what's going on. When I would make the cylinder, when I, when I would give it caps, it would work, I think. Let's see. No hoop. Hmm. Hmm. You know what? No caps. I try to connect this guy here. Connect and bring the connection instead of the cylinder inside. Dong. Does the same. That's a little strange. Connect. I copy this cylinder and drag it inside the volume builder. This works. <laughs> That's strange. <laughs> okay, this works. Good. Why not? Volume builder. But I bring this volume builder, uh, this, this cylinder, in the uh, Folder, and I want to subtract this, of course. And the fold in the cylinder, just in the folder, I make it dilate and erode. In R20, it's it's named different, but you will find it. So, okay, see, we get this hole. This is exactly what I want. But I want this. Hole. Let's go back to zero here. This hole so that this fits nicely. Let's go to five. So a little bigger. Let's see six and smooth it out. So over the folder, I'm going to smooth it. And it looks nice. This looks nice. A little bigger, maybe seven. Save it, so I don't want to see that. And I have now the thing. Now we could make everything a little uh, fatter, so sort of rotor, but it's a little small, it's also a little thin. Can we do this now? Let's see. Theoretically, yes. The only thing is. We have to make this two cylinder later a little broader. This is no problem. So we can make here in the wrap. Let's give this a radius of 12. It's bigger now, of course. But 
not in the middle, that doesn't matter, let's try it. And now I go to the cylinder here. Give this a seven maybe. Yeah, but this is not, no it's not. In the middle here, why? Why is it not in the middle here? Coordinates are okay here. That's okay. So everything is okay here. I don't know why it is, is now. Hmm. This is all correct here. Only that works. Formula. This is found if it works. Let's hide. Uh, let's delete this window for the moment here. And let's hide this everything. You just have to know this is the same spline wrapper like we have here. So. You know what? I delete the spline wrapper here. This is not in the middle, it seems. See? This is not in the middle. And why is this so? Sometimes when you activate and deactivate things, it works later on, but sometimes not. Ah, you see? Now it just was the connect thing. <laughs> it deactivated and activate, deactivate the connect, and now it's in the ground. As I said, sometimes you have just to activate and deactivate. So. Copy this. Oh, we need uh, this spline wrap. Uh, this spline wrap here. And the cylinder. Yeah, now it's in the middle. Now. Uh, blah, 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 full spline. And here, lots of segments. I said so. In, in, oops, no, nix, nothing. M B. No NB. So, okay, that looks nice. This is okay. So, now it's a little fit that this whole thing. And now I steal this guy, bring it in a volume measure, a volume builder, bring it here under the thing here it fits perfect I would say maybe a little bigger now it, yeah I like it make it could make it even thicker I think but then uh, you will get this together if you have this together so just go with the whole cube here a little in the front, so when you go, so check, you see, you will see it. Everything works. Doesn't matter how you do this. Ah, that looks maybe even better. How you like it? So, so, so do it really how you like it. Cube is now hundred minus ten. Why is this? Now? Okay. 
and maybe a little bit in front. Is it down in front a little bit? Yeah, it's a little bit. I think that it does not look bad when we go. Yep, okay. Camera. Dubi. Save. And now, when we hit render, if we find our dialogue. De -de 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 -de. Okay, dialogue. Whoops. Great. Great, 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 great. Okay. <laughs> that really looks nice. <laughs> and now let's make something, some uh, texture for them. Uh, so first let's find maybe a, a better HDRI. Which one could be nice here. Yeah. I try my favorites first. Maybe this year. Where is the rig? Let's bring it up here. And you see now the code and everything looks much better with one thing. Uh, for the tubes here, so for uh, let's make a simple. A glossy black material, I would say. Glossy black material, no editor. Ma -ba 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 -ba. Give me something. Black is black. Do -do 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 -do. So you can. So a little float for the roughness, so that we don't have this, yeah, cool. And now I want, over this I want something like, uh, yeah, so, 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 yeah, atomary out of this, so I can make this cylinder an instance Here's the instance. Bring it to the to here so we know that they are together, and put the instance in an atom array. <laughs> looks like looks nice somehow. Looks like nice like like a closed tube thing. That's not bad, but it's not what we want, of course. So in the atom array, point two, point two, and here five maybe. We get this nice thing here, and for the background, I'll make this later. I make a texture for this. I think I make an emission texture to do. I want a dark wall and an emission texture so that it, it lights a little bit in the holes, you know. So. A texture for the wall. So this is the yeah this here. How is this called? What's called gitter? Ah, I say yeah atom doesn't matter. Okay. This I don't have to name. Or okay, this is our tube. No, this is our. No, not this is not. Our, this is our tube. Tube. This is our whatever, whatever. <laughs> and now we make um, for the wall things uh, clean material. Name it B -b -b wall. And this will be a specular material with GGX. 
and we come on our volume measure. <laughs> that looks great. <laughs> this would be nice, just a little roughness on it. Take a little roughness on it. <laughs> Look at this. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Make it black and we have our thing. Black transmission. That would be much easier than the thing I did. Transmission. Dark. Now make I made it with, with uh, the original one I made it with sub uh, subsurface scattering and everything, but it seems ah uh, let's try the subsurface but it's not necessary. Let's try to make now something for the thing here. So this is diffuse material. I want to know how this is called. Great. <laughs> I know it since, since my first English uh, lesson, I think. <laughs> Come on, is this... <laughs> so, and give this... this Blink uh, body emission. Dum. Bring it to the atom array. It lights in, inside the hole, so, so that this is what I want. But it lights a little too much. That looks good. Maybe make the atom area a little smaller. Yep. But I try it now. With the wall I try it a little different. I try it. It's roughness. Scattering medium. Ah, this is yeah. This is the problem with the GGX. It makes this this refraction here. When I go to the basic and say instead of GGX octane, don't get this. In. Ah, that looks better. That looks better, definitely. Let's bring in a little camera image and the noise. Enable the noise here. So we should get very nice. Yeah, this is nice. We see it even this guy. And I want it. Uh, this is a little bright, yes. But uh, in post work we can make this nicer. I think. Well, let's go here to and let's go. We could try a little scattering, but I think we don't need scattering. But why not? Let's try it. We are here to learn. Not the scattering, this is... No, no, I thought we don't need it. A little more, let's go to 10 maybe. Yeah, that looks nice. Save it. Yeah, that's it. When we go to the camera image, we play with some LUTs here. Here. Let's try. We go through the LUTs and see maybe we get a nice thing we like. Ah, that looks nice. Look at this. 
So you don't even have to work in, po in post work for something. But I, I like to do this in, in Adobe Premiere or After Effects or Fusion or somewhere. So you have more control. So I go up and I leave this uh, in the camera. Uh, you can, yeah, however you want it, do it like you want it. So maybe you can go to the, put a RGB color inside here. Make it so a little darker. But then we lose this shine through thing, you see. Yeah, this is nice. Save it. Okay. We are done. Everything is done. I will render here the 100 frames. And I don't render 100 frames, I render 99 frames. So the the first the, and the last frame is not the same because when I uh, that when I render here from position zero to position hundred, the position zero and hundred is the same is the same frame, it's the same picture, the same position. So it, you would see it a little bit, not not really uh, hard, but if you render just just ninety nine pictures, you render hundred pictures, but from Zero to hundred would be one hundred one pictures. So we need one hundred pictures from zero to ninety-nine, and then we don't have this uh, this double pictures. So, so it lasted the first. Good. Hope this makes sense. <laughs> Go to here, obtain, obtain render, denoise papers, outputs. First, I say all frames, but I want just ninety-nine here. This is it, 100 frames from 0 to 99. Save this and uh, what do I want here? Yeah, maybe in the render settings I see. It's not, not necessary here, I think, but static noise, why not? And how many samples I do have? I think 200. This is enough for now. Okay, stop this and I render it and I'm back in a second for you. See you soon. Uh, see you in a second. So let's see what we got. So uh, now let's start. But this is nice. <laughs> you see the grid uh, moves as well. Uh, that looks not, that looks, that looks great. But this was not the idea. Yeah, you know why? Because I simply Copied this spline wrap here to this cylinder. No, no, that yeah. I copied this spline wrap to the cylinder, and the, the atom array is the the instance is, is is from this cylinder, and here in this spline wrap we have the animation too. And this animation comes from this spline wrap we have stolen. But that looks nice. <laughs> it goes the, exactly the, the, in the opposite direction, but why not? I leave it like this. This is great. But so like this. Look, we, we did not even need. Uh, we would not even need a. Uh, uh, Raised by because these distortions of our object would be behind here. But so we see how it works. But you see how nice this looks when when it comes through the holes. It it gets darker and it becomes darker and it, it, it looks so great. Yeah. Now put it in any uh, in any program. It, it's like like Premiere, After Effects, what I said, and and. Uh, Put a, a little some uh, loop, uh, some music loop, or some what I did, some <laughs> on it, and, and it's done. That looks great with the, with the moving mesh, it looks much better than the original one. That is really nice, love it.
Okay. We are done. So I think, really, I think that it's not necessary to make this with the physical render, because with the physical render to make something like this would render really, uh, but you can do it. Take a, a transparent material, make it rough, make it a little dark, and you have the same, you have the same effect. But uh, it will render long time. So, okay. We are the, I love this with, with the moving grid here. That looks much better than the original one. Okay. So I hope you like this one and I hope I find time for another tutorial before Christmas. Oh, we will see. But I think yes. Uh, yeah, if you have requests, complaints, uh, whatever suggestions but I don't know whatever please write me in the comments on my Facebook site on my Facebook group uh, email me write me on my website or whatever you want I try to answer really everything and if you want to donate yeah it's Christmas so, so if you want to donate uh, you will find the link in the description and for the for PayPal and if you want to support me on, uh, on Patreon you will find a link also. I would appreciate both ways, really. And yeah, I try to find time for before Christmas. I will make another tutorial. Uh, I, I have a lot of to, to, to do, but uh, and I have a lot for on my list for tutorials. Uh, but it's it's really not easy to make everything alone. And then of course, when I get a job or something else, it, it comes first. No question about it. Okay, so we are done and yep, that's it. Again, hope you liked it. I wish you all the best here from Vienna and have a wonderful time. And yeah, is something more to say? I don't think so. You will find every link you need in the description. And yeah, yeah that's it. So I say tschüss. Und bye-bye and have much fun with this tutorial. Tschüss und bye-bye.